coffee night so much. A lot of night. Yes. Okay. Of course, those with respiratory infections, um, a lot of them have TB or are exposed to TB. So that's a very important part of um, the diagnosis. Because children are not nearly as easy as adults. Adults, they cough and you can examine their sputum, children swallow their sputum and anyway, even if they do cough, uh, not as many of them are sputum positive. I think the main challenges are how to definitively diagnose TB. So there are a number of scoring systems that have been developed that use clinical symptoms like chronic cough, a positive tuberculin skin test, a TB contact and using a variety of those sorts of things with or without a chest x-ray for example one can derive a score that makes a child likely or less likely of having TB. However if you look at the literature on how these scoring systems perform, mm. so if you look at these scoring systems and see well how many were correct in diagnosing TB, there's huge variability and this is even more so in the era of HIV because the signs and symptoms of TB are not really specific for TB. You know, a cough, loss of weight, those sorts of symptoms happen in other diseases, particularly in HIV-associated respiratory diseases. In addition, um, things like the tuberculin skin test are fraught with uh, difficulty. Um, they must be properly done, they must be properly interpreted, and they perf the skin test performs poorly in children who are malnourished and in HIV-infected children. So the X-ray is helpful, but again is subject to a lot of variability and to a lot of variability in interpretation. What's important is that if you look at children who have culture-confirmed TB and are hospitalized, in fact, up to 50% are discharged from hospital without being treated for TB. And why is that? It's because culture results take around four weeks. So the status quo before was children were basically diagnosed with TB using clinical and radiological criteria. And our first, the first question that we began with was, could we make a confirmed microbiological diagnosis in children? Now the reason no one had really investigated sputum before was there was this teaching that children don't cough up, which is correct, and that getting sputum in young children was not possible. And that's why gastric lavage was the standard of care in, in, um, in hospitalized children. Now, in order to get sputum from children, what we used is a method called sputum induction, which has been used in other um, illnesses and which is also has been used in adults. And, and what that does is basically you nebulize the child with hypertonic saline. It's saline that is more salty than normal saline. It's a 3 to 5 percent salt solution. And that induces a lot of cough in the child and also hydrates the secretion so that the lower respiratory secretions, the mucus sitting in, in their lungs, is moved up with that coughing. And then after that hypertonic saline nebulization, if the child's old enough, we would ask them to cough out um, a specimen, or mostly because these children are young, we would suction the child to mm -hmm. obtain that mucus. And so the first study was three of those compared to three gastric lavages. And what we did is we did a smear and culture on, on each um, sputum specimen and on each gastric lavage. And we were very gratified to find that in fact sputum was, um, firstly could be done in almost all children. We obtained I think sputum in around 98% of the children in whom we attempted sputum. And these children were young, their median age was around a year. The youngest child in whom we could obtain sputum was around a month of age. And 25% of those children had culture confirmed TB and in fact the yield from three sputum was almost threefold higher than from three gastric lavages and the yield from a single sputum was equivalent to three gastric lavages. So that was a very uh, good finding because it meant that instead of hospitalizing a child doing three gastric lavages you could in fact just do a single sputum which would give you the same yield. That's a very big challenge is, that, is the, the time constraints. The other challenge was the space constraint because we didn't have a dedicated place to do the sputum induction. So we did it 
in the emergency room with the doors and windows open for um, good ventilation. Another important finding of the primary care study was that in fact 22% of children who would not have been clinically diagnosed with TB and were not put onto treatment by the treating doctor in fact were put onto treatments once the culture results um, became positive. So this, uh, the increase in diagnostic capacity was really um, considerable and led to um, a much improved treatment of children who would otherwise not have been treated. What's very exciting is the capacity for rapid diagnosis in terms of gene expert and I think this really creates an imperative for us to get to do sputum in children and we recently completed a, spu a study of sputum induction in children using gene expert culture and smear and uh, we again used two um, sputum specimens and the reason we used two is your yield from a second sputum specimen is about a 15 percent incremental yield in terms of culture positivity Using EXPERT, we were very pleased to find that, in fact, if you use two induced sputum, your yield from EXPERT is about a 76% sensitivity. So three quarters of children who have culture-confirmed TB on two sputum, in fact, have their TB confirmed by gene expert. A single sputum has only around a 65% sensitivity in children. So we really need a second sputum to get a sensitivity of around 76%. But having the capacity to do gene expert means you have on-site diagnosis of TB and drug resistance. So having gene expert on site, I believe, strengthens enormously our ability to appropriately provide treatment and to provide timely mm -hmm. treatment to children. And the major side effects reported are increased cough, which is actually what one expects from the, from the procedure, some um, bleeding from the nose, which is due to the suctioning, and um, some wheezing um, because of bronchoconstriction from, from the hypertonic saline. So what we actually do is we pre-treat children with a bronchodilator. So you can either give a, a, a short-acting beat to agonist via a pump with a spacer or you can actually add it to the nebulizer when you nebulize with hypertonic saline. We were washing um, them in soapy water with some bleach and then sun drying them um, which, which actually works and certainly if I was in a rural situation I would definitely do that. At Red Cross at Somerset Hospital at Nalongile Clinic in Kailicha we've, we've, built, we've built sputum induction booths which are uh, booths with, a neg uh, with a, an extractor fan and ultraviolet lights in um, and that provides uh, good um, in, uh, precautions for transmission. First message, sputum induction is possible in all aged children, there's no lower age limit, and in HIV infected and uninfected children. Second message, sputum induction is very effective for diagnosing TB in children, especially with gene expert, um, and should be attempted at primary, secondary and tertiary level facilities. There is no um, level at which we should not be doing sputum induction. Third message, two sputum are necessary in children if we really want uh, a good yield and really want to um, make maximal use of expert and culture technology. Mm -hmm.